All right, in this video we're going to show a way we have to set up customers to track warranties. Now we have set up people several different ways to track warranties based on their requirements. Everyone has slightly different rules, but this is just one example. This client sells car engines. Each engine includes a 10% warranty insurance plan that they sell that is backed by the manufacturer. If the customer warranty repairs cost above the 10%, our customer, our client, takes a deduction on their next payment to the manufacturer. If the customer warranty repairs cost below the 10%, then my client takes it as revenue after one year. So we're going to go ahead and create an invoice and we're going to sell the invoice, we're going to sell it to Sammy. Let me expand the screen here. We're going to use an item code engine and just sell it from my warehouse. Quantity of one and the price is going to be $5,000. Now the second line on the invoice is we're going to create an item called warranty insurance plan. Okay, and it's not set up, so we're going to go ahead and set it up. So it's going to be an other charge, and we're just going to copy and put it in the description. We'll put in an amount of a dollar, and the account here is going to hit a warranty liability account. And that account, which I have not set up yet, is going to be an other current liability. Okay. Okay, now we set it up to hit an other current liability, of course, because we can't recognize this revenue yet uh, until the one year comes up, right? So it's going to come in here as $500. Now when I hit save and I look at my transaction journal, behind the scenes what this transaction is doing, right? Hits accounts receivable for $5,500, revenue for $5,000, because I sold the engine and then takes out the inventory asset and hits the cost of goods sold. That's all related to the engine. But then it also hits my warranty liability account for $5,000. So it'll be a positive amount on my balance sheet for $500, excuse me. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a second one. So create a copy and we're going to sell to Maria do a quick add. So we're going to sell her an engine that was $8,000 and so therefore the warranty will be $800 and save and close. So next their customer calls and says there's an issue with the engine that was sold and they need to bring it in for repair. So immediately we go in and create a sales order. So we're going to pretend Sammy has an issue. So I create a sales order to Sammy. Again, let me expand this. And on the sales order, we're going to add a group item right away, okay? And the group item is going to be called Warranty Repair Group. So I'm going to add it as a group item, okay? And I'm going to put on the description is just going to be Warranty Repair. Uh, the items down below here, I'm going to add in my, wa my Warranty Insurance Plan item and put it in as a quantity of negative one so that I can remember that it should be negative. And then I'm also going to put in a second item in this group and that item is going to be called warranty usage. Okay. Warranty usage is also going to be an other charge. I'll put that in the description. Uh, the amount will be zero and the account on this one will be warranty income. Okay, so warranty income account, and it'll be an income account type. Now, in this scenario, we don't want, oh, I'm sorry, and I want to put a po positive quantity one. In this scenario, we don't want to print the items in the group because we don't want the customer seeing this. We're doing this as a group so that we can keep track of it behind the scenes. So we don't, we want to leave this box unchecked that we're not going to print the items in the group. And then we're going to say, okay. So on the sales order, I'm going to add the group item right away when the customer calls and says that they have to bring in their engine for repair so that I have it in here prepped and ready. 
I want to leave the quantity in here as negative one or or at least leave the the uh, rate I'm sorry as negative one on here so that the net of this group is zero we we'll always want the net of this group to be zero okay now <clears throat> As we use the parts uh, during the repair, so all, any parts that we need to add during the repair, right? We need to add some axle, and we need to, uh, and we're going to zero it out, right? Because we're not selling it. This is a warranty repair, and I'm going to also add, I don't know, some cleaning solution, <laughs> and zero it out. Okay, so everything that we're using while we're going through and doing this repair, we're going to add it to the sales order as well so that when we turn it over to being an invoice, it's going to relieve right our inventory for these parts that we're using to repair the job. Now we're gonna go ahead and hit save so that it saves, oops, of course, Sammy is the customer. Uh, go ahead and hit save, so it's hit save, so it saves the transaction. Now we're going to go up to our reports and our transaction journal so that we can see behind the scenes what's happening. Okay, so on this sales order, of course, it's a non-posting transaction, and so nothing is affected yet. Okay, so zero dollar order, nothing is affected yet. But because we have it on a sales order, of course, when we put, oh, I didn't put a quantity on here, one, one. <laughs> Because it's on a sales order, when we look in the quantity field and we push that little graph, it'll hold that aside, right? That 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 is no longer able or available for sale because we've used it on this particular repair ticket. Once we finish, we're going to go ahead and create the invoice. Okay, and we're going to create the invoice for all items in here. Again, let me expand it so you can see a little better. Uh, so we have our warranty repair group, warranty insurance plan, usage. And then, of course, our axles and cleaning solutions down here at a $0 charge. Now, when we save this transaction, oh, I must assign a site to each line that has inventory parts. So let me go ahead and assign a site. Okay, so once I save this transaction now, behind the scenes again, when I look at my transaction journal, now it's going to pick up and allocate the costs for those inventory parts on this particular order, right? So the $8.48 is going to come out of inventory asset and hit cost of goods sold. And then the $1.50 for the cleaning solution comes out of inventory asset and hits cost of goods sold. So we see on this transaction that the net effect of this is $10.98. Not a big deal, right? <laughs> but still, so on the invoice itself, we're gonna come back in here now and we're gonna update it so that the insurance Warranty insurance plan is negative $10.98. That's 98, right? Yeah, 98 cents. <laughs> and then on the flip side, uh, on the warranty usage, we're going to do $10.98 positive. All right, and I'm going to hit save again. Okay. Now when we go look at it behind the scenes, so I go into reports and transaction journal and move some of these over again. So here's what's happening behind the scenes, right? So now we're saying, okay, warranty insurance plan, right? So that item against the warranty uh, liability account is going to hit negative $10.98, okay? Uh, or debit it, right? So it's a negative amount. When it hits, it's going to lower the balance there. And then we're also crediting uh, warranty income account for that $10.98, right? Okay, and so this credit and in income is washing out the cost of goods sold here. So it's a it's a net uh, wash, right, on, on um, this account. But it's allowing us to accurately um, capture how much of the liability we've used. Now what we'll want to do is we'll want to create a report. So let me close out of all these screens. And I'm going to create a transaction, a custom transaction detail report. And I'm going to create it for all time because I want to look at this for all time. I want a total by customer. And then I'm going to filter it for just the warranty liability account. Okay. 
Then I'm also going to create a filter on here for cleared status of no. Okay. So when I run this report now, it's going to show me my balance that's sitting in that warranty liability account. So I have $800 sitting in there for Maria. I had my $500 for Sammy and then when we backed out the $10.98 of usage when he came in for a repair, so his warranty account is left with just $489.02. Now based on our scenario here, if nothing else happened and February 2018 came around, then what would what I would do is I would run this report to see who, you know, who uh, had a balance or who purchased a year ago and then still has a balance in this account and I would create a journal entry okay so we're doing it on uh, 2 28 2018 I would create a journal entry where I would take the warranty income account and I would credit it for that 489.02 right for Sammy and then I would debit the warranty liability account because in our contract it says after a year if you have not used this cost right then the warranty's up so then we can recognize it as income All right so if I save this transaction and I come back to my custom transaction detail report now I have zeroed out Sammy's warranty liability here on the on my balance sheet and recognize the income. And in this instance, there's no offsetting COGS to the income. So that's just pure income. Okay. Now, of course, because this is a uh, balance sheet account, I can go in and reconcile this account. So I'm going to reconcile the warranty liability account. Now, since the warranty liability account is an account we never receive a statement for, I'm going to go ahead and put in an ending balance of zero. I never get a statement for this account. It always will net out to zero. And then I'm going to say continue. Okay. Now on this screen, I can customize my columns and add the payee and maybe take out the, the uh, type because that's not important. And notice how I can see the payee is Sammy and Sammy. So I can sort this field and it makes it a little bit easier to reconcile. So I'm going to click off everything for Sammy and Sammy. My difference is zero and I can hit reconcile now. Now when I go back to my report, I'm only left with the warranty liability for Maria. Now let's say Maria comes in for some warranty. Okay, we're back to, to you know modern day time. <laughs> Maria comes in for some warranty, so I'm gonna go in and create a sales order right away. She says, hey, I'm coming in. Okay. And I'm going to add the warranty insurance or warranty repair group on here. Again, we want it to be a negative amount, so it zeroes out. And then Maria, when we're going through and doing her repair, we have some gears that we needed to use on to fix her engine. Okay, so we need to use two gears at a zero dollar sales price again. Say save. Oops, let me change the date to today. Sorry about that. Save. And then I'm going to create an invoice from this sales order so that the usage actually, right, that it's actually removed from our parts. So I'm going to go to my warehouse here site and say save. Oh, I did it again. <laughs> save. <clears throat> now behind the scenes, if I go to my transaction journal, I see what the actual cost. So it's $2,000 in cost for adding these gears to do this repair. So I'm going to go back to my invoice after I hit save and put in negative $2,000 right to the warranty insurance plan and then usage of $2,000 so it nets out to zero. Now I didn't show this on the other one but let me go ahead and do a print preview just just so that we can see what it looks like. Uh, okay I didn't want to print preview effectively. Right, it really doesn't want to print on this report. So uh, basically, you know already, right? What you would see on this when you do print preview, the warranty repair, you would just see this line, warranty repair of zero, and then warranty usage of gears of zero. So if you had to print this out for Maria, that's all you would see. You would not see these details here.
<clears throat> so if I say save and close on this transaction, going back now to my custom transaction detail report, right? So now with Maria, I'm upside down in my liability, right? Because she only, we only charged $800 in liability uh, warranty and it costs $2,000 to repair it. So in our scenario here, what we do is then we go in and we enter a bill and we enter a vendor credit to our vendor who we purchase these engines from, so our manufacturer. So on the item here, I would go in and say I have a warranty, a warranty, right, insurance plan. So I'm taking a credit for a warranty insurance plan. I would put on there the amount of $1,200 and I would associate the customer of Maria. And of course, let's change the date. Okay, so that I can apply this credit next time I am uh, paying a bill for ABC Machine Company. I can save this. Now when I go back and I look at my custom transaction detail report here, right, I have now recovered the money for this warranty. So $800 uh, in the invoice, I have the $2,000 when we did the repair work, and then the $1,200 in the vendor credit where I'm recovering that added expense that was um, allocated during the repair, okay? Now again, on this one, I can go in and reconcile, right? I'm reconciling the warranty liability account, still reconciling it to zero, because we're always reconciling it to zero. And I can check off all of Maria, reconcile it to zero. And what I'm left with now on my warranty liability report, which hopefully we have memorized or uh, gone up and added it to our icon bar, is there's nothing there, okay? So this is an example of uh, what we have set up with customers around our warranty scenarios. When we do these scenarios, what we do is we first figure out the movement of the debits and the credits on paper. Okay, then we go in and we figure out how will we get QuickBooks to mimic those movements. So again, this is an example of one of our warranty setups and hopefully it'll help you roll out some warranty setups to your customers.